Hello everyone, this is Rajesh Sivasumanian. I'm an AVS Cloud Solution Architect here at VMware. Welcome back to another AVS How-To video. Today's video, we're going to talk about HCX migrations and HCX network extension to AVS. So before jumping into the video, some of the prerequisites or you need to be aware of, or the AVS has been already deployed, service mesh, HCX service mesh has been deployed and configured, and we got a proper credentials to the source v center, and the HCX role mapping has been already set. To refer to some of the steps, how to do, you can refer back to the, some of the previous videos we have posted on the ABS uh, Teams YouTube channel. So starting with HCX network extension to ABS. So this is a very good document where you can review some of the unsupported source configurations and also some of the restricted source network types, which you cannot extend using the HCX network extension. For example, you cannot extend a VLAN or poor group uh, that does another VLAN or VLAN type zero. And you can extend a private VLAN, for example. You can extend uh, VMK interfaces, right? So this is a good document to review before you decide to do the network extension for production use case. So here I'm showing the site pairing is already up and running between the source and the HCX deployed at part of the AVS STDC Invest Hero. And uh, here I'm showing up the service mesh uh, by logging to the HCX connector appliance and on-prem. So uh, the compute profiles and input profiles have already been set and the service mesh has been deployed as well. As you can see here, it's running between the on-prem source side to the target service, which is AVS deployed in the West Europe STDC. And some of the services has been enabled already. So we also have the network extension service enabled and showing green, which means we are good to go with HCX network extension. So here I'm showing in the on-prem vCenter, the distributed port group, uh, VLAN underscore 16 12 underscore PG uh, is what we're going to try to extend to AVS. To extend the networks, log into the HCX on prem, HCX manager, connect or select services and click network extension. And it's going to uh, load all the different site pairings and we're going to select uh, extend networks under the VST drop site pairing and we're going to select the VLAN 1612 underscore PG distributed port group which is backed up with the VLAN 1612 and click next. And here we're going to select the destination first up router, which is the NSXT tier one gateway on the ABS STDC side. And we're now going to enable mobility up device networking, which means the default gateway will be still sitting in on-premises. And we're going to give a gateway IP address, which is the host IP, um, the same IP as on-prem followed by the subnet mask. And we're going to select the appliance. In this case, only one appliance is deployed. We're going to go with that and click Submit. This is going to start the process of extending networks, uh, connecting the VNX on source and target site on that particular post pool groups. And as you can see, the extension is already um, done and it's in the green state. And if you expand that, you will see the the source port group and the destination port group, which I'm highlighting, is starting with L2E underscore VLAN is that logical segment on the AVS side. So this is the NSXT on the AVS side where we see the extension port group or segment uh, appeared on under NSXT with the same gateway IP. And you can see the ports. We have currently any R1, the receiver side appliance is attached to the port group on the target side on AVS. And if you expand that logical segment, you can see that means that state is up as expected, but and also they expect that the gateway connectivity is set to off, which means by default, when you extend the networks in HCX, the default gateway will be sitting in on-premises. That's where we're ending the extensions and we are diving into the migration now. So the first one we're gonna be talking, looking at is how to migrate using the bulk migration. And these are some of the network and the requirements you need to be aware of. So you can look into this in the VMware documentation page. So basically, HCX bulk migration is a host-based replication to relocate the VMs between two different HCX deployments. And it's going to start the replication. And the finally, the show will happen where it's going to power off the VM and power on the VM on the target site. And you can also do some, some other customization, depending on the type of OS you have. Both Windows and Linux are supported. For example, you can change the DNS, IP at the VM, things like that. So to migrate the VM, you can click Migrate and you can select the site pairing in this case west europe stdc site pairing and we're going to filter the vms with the name bulk underscore demo underscore 16 of 31 37 couple of vms we are going to bulk migrate 
provide a group name. By the way, this is we are, this is the workflow we are doing it from the HCX on premises connector manager web portal. And we're going to click add to the migration config. And showing the status on the source VM, for example, bug demo 1631, showing the IP. And it is currently connected and uh, serving the user requests from the on premises side. And uh, as you can see, the IP is 10, 1 -1 And we can also able to ping the 16.31 default gateway, which is sitting in on premises side. Okay. And in the transfer and placement, where we're going to select the mandate config, which is the cluster resource pool to which you want to migrate the VM to on the target side. And for the storage, it's a vSAN data store by default on AVS side, and you can also change the storage profile based on the storage policy you want to set for the VM, the vSAN level. And thin provisioning is a format I'm going with. And you can also specify a destination folder if you want, if you want one on the destination side. And the migration profile is bulk migration. And the switchover schedule is a date and time at which you want to do the switchover, not the replication, because as soon as you hit the configuration, it's going to start replicating the VMDKs of those VMs. But when it comes to actual switchover, this is actual switchover, which is power off and power on the VMs, which you can schedule according to your business needs. You can also override that later if you want, or postponed if your requirements change. Here, you can also force unmount iOS images and remove snapshots. And under extended options, you can also do further customization like DNS. You can replicate security tags or upgrade VM hardware or VM tools. And you can also migrate custom attributes, which are the attributes you set for the VM. And you can also override some of the settings you have set so far on a specifically on a, on a VM level here. As you can see, the networks are already auto-mapped from source to the extended L2E VLAN 1612 network because the network extension is already in place. Click validate. And if everything is green, then click go to start the migrations. Where we are starting the bulk migration. It's going to start with the bulk sync first. And it's going to go into this phase of replicating the, um, the VMDKs or the VMs, both the VMs in parallel from source to target site. And we're starting the migrations or replications around 11.38 a.m. on September the 26th. And you can refresh the events tab or option for each VM to understand what's going on behind the scenes. And after some time, you see after five, five six minutes, you see the, the base sync. The base sync is uh, around 25% for both the VMs. And once the basing is done, uh, there'll be 100% basing complete. And then the VMs will enter into the RPO interval of every two hours. It's going to replicate the data. And they will be waiting in a switch over maintenance window, which is what I've, we have said as part of the initial configuration. So you can see they are both are waiting for maintenance window to kick in. So they'll be still active on source side serving customers. Replication's done, but now they're waiting for the switch over to happen. So what I'm going to do is just to save time for this demo, I'm going to go and overwrite this uh, switchover schedule and I'm going to do the immediate switchover. And here I'm just showing the VMs are still responding to the pings. And here we're going to go to the schedule, select both the VMs, and either you can postpone the schedule to say next month, October, for example, or you can ignore the failover window and start migration as soon as possible, right? Depending on the use case, depending on the business requirements, you can do either of those options. Yeah, I'm going to click ignore failover window, start the switchover as soon as possible, and click apply. Now they both go into the switchover phase, and they're going to happen, both of them have to, going to happen parallel switchovers. As you can see, the source VMs are still left so that you can always go back and power them on, but they're powered off at the source and they're powered on at the target side on AVS side, 1631, 1637. And I can ping them after they move to the AVS as well. You can see they, they can ping the gateways happily. Next, we are going into the RAB migration type, right? Here, uh, we're going to use RAB migration. Again, using, it's going to use a host-based replication, right? And 
some of the underlay requirements like we discussed for bug migration in the BIOS for RAM. So here it's going to do the host-based replication, but when it comes to actual server, it's going to do the vMotion instead of power on, power on VMs. And these are the RAV VMs we're going to be using for this demo. They're sitting in on-premises. And uh, some of the configs here, IPs are 10, 118, 11.24. This is RAV hyphen demo, demo hyphen 11.24 VM. And they can able to reach the gateway, 11.1 on the on-premises side. So connectivity is verified. And now we're going to click migrate and uh, click the site pairing. I'm going to select those VMs, RAV demo 11.24 and 11.27. And I'm going to give a group name and click add. So here, we can select some other destination configuration to which you want to place the VMs, like resource pools, storage. Here we can select the visa and data store and some we can change storage policies. And the migration profile will be replicated as a vMotion instead of bulk. And you can select the folder and thin provisioning as a format. And here we're gonna switch the skip the switch over schedule and gonna do the switch over as soon as possible. And also you have option to change some of the external options here as part of the migration. So here we can override if needed, and the network's already mapped because I already extended that network to ABS. You can click validate. If everything is good, you can click go to start the migrations which is going to start the replication of those VMs. And yeah, they will be entering the replication phase. Once the replication is done, they're going to be, so one will be doing the switch over, the other VMs will be in a park state. So waiting for the resource availability as I am highlighting there because the mobility agent is busy serving the other VM doing the switch over. And until that is complete, the other VMs will be in park state. This is a switch over phase. It's a vMotion one at a time in a serial fashion, okay? So you can see the VMs are now live migrated from on-premises. They no longer show up in, in the on-premises side. And if you see the ABS side, they both powered on and, and appearing. Yeah. So and that concludes the HCX layer on next network extensions and uh, migrations using HCX bulk and RAW migration type from on-premises to ABS STDC. Hope you found the video useful and thanks for listening.